One area that I particularly want to mention up front is the, uh, the topic of signs, positives and negatives. One thing that particularly tends to bedevil students as they're working through physics is getting the signs wrong, using positives when they should use negatives, or using negatives when they should use positives. So we're going to try to be very careful on every single problem about getting the signs correct. And again, I'm going to try to give you an approach and a notation which will make you less likely to make careless mistakes about the signs. And the key to the approach is that we're always consciously going to think about every sign. And in particular, we are always going to put the sign on any number. So obviously, suppose I told you um, that I was thinking about the number negative 5. How would you write down the number negative 5? Well, this is probably how you would write down the number negative 5. You'd have to include the sign, because otherwise we wouldn't see that it was negative. But suppose I told you that I was thinking about the number positive 6. Now, how would you write down the number positive 6? How would you write the number positive 6? Well, in normal life, the way you would usually write the number positive 6 is like this. Even though you wouldn't put in the sign, you would still know that it's positive, because that's the convention in ordinary mathematics. If you don't indicate a sign on a number, the convention is that it's automatically positive. So this would be fine in ordinary life. However, I'm going to be bossy and dictatorial and tell you not to do that in this portion of physics. In this portion of physics, not only do you need to include the sign on every negative number, you must include the sign on every positive number. So this would be a bad way of writing positive 6. This is not a good way to write the number positive 6. What would be a good way to write the number positive 6? This is the good way to write the number positive 6. You need to indicate the sign on positive numbers just as much as the sign on negative numbers. That way you're always thinking about the signs on every part of the problem. Otherwise, if you only include the signs on negative numbers, you're very likely to forget those signs too. People who only include signs on negative numbers tend to not notice when uh, the numbers are negative. But if you're always consciously thinking about the sign for both positive and negative numbers, um, then you're less likely to make mistakes about signs. So I'm going to be very insistent that you should always write down the signs for both positive and negative uh, numbers. Now again, people who are already adept at this material don't need to be so careful, but I'm intending this, these videos for people who find they make lots of mistakes on this material. And then I really insist, uh, if you're having trouble with this material, that you write down the sign, not just in front of negative numbers, but also in front of positive numbers. Well, uh, we'll see lots of examples where I'll get to show you more clearly what I mean by this. So if, if you don't quite see yet exactly what my point is here, that should become apparent later in the videos. Let's start by reviewing the kinematics variables. In fact, um, now, I'm kind of thinking here that probably most of the people that are watching this video, most of the people that are watching this video are probably not trying to learn the material from scratch. Most of you have already tried to learn the material probably from your class or from your textbook and you're having some difficulty with it and that's why you're coming to this video. Um, so, um, let me ask you, if you have been exposed to this material before, try to, to pause the video and write down what are the kinematics variables. Just take a couple seconds to see if you can think of the kinematics variables. I hope you gave that a little thought. Uh, well, one of the kinematics variables is displacement. You can use delta x for the displacement variable. Um, another kinematics variable is the initial velocity. The initial velocity. Another kinematics variable is the final velocity. Another variable is the acceleration. And the fifth and last variable is time. These are the kinematics variables. Let's go through and discuss the units for these variables. If you've already been exposed to this material, you should already have the units memorized. Now what we're going to go through are the official SI units for each of these variables. So what are the official SI units for displacement? I hope you know that the units for that are meters, which we can abbreviate as M. 
So the units for this concept is meters. Now, of course, you could measure displacement in feet or yards or miles, but the official standard units are meters. So it's good to know the standard units. How about the standard units for velocity? I hope you know that the standard units for velocity are meters per second. Of course, in real life, we're more likely to talk about your velocity in miles per hour. In the United States, we tend to talk about velocity in miles per hour. Um, but in physics, the standard units are meters per second. Meters per second. What are the standard units for the final velocity? I hope that was very, very easy. It's another velocity, so it should also be meters per second. So this will also be meters per second. Velocity is always measured in meters per second. What are the standard units for acceleration? Those are the most complicated units that we're going to see here. Those turn out to be meters per second squared. And when you first learned about acceleration, you should have seen an explanation for why these units make sense. But we're not going to really explain them right now. We're just going to memorize that the units for acceleration are meters per second squared. Meters per second squared. That should be memorized. And here should be another really easy one. What are the official units for time? Seconds. Notice that we're using the abbreviation S for seconds. Of course, in ordinary life, we're more likely to use minutes or hours, perhaps, but the standard unit for time in physics is seconds. So here are all our standard units. Meters, meters per second, meters per second, meters per second squared, and seconds are the standard units for each of these concepts. And those should all be memorized if you haven't already done so. Those are our units. I'm going to erase that information about units now, but I strongly encourage you to memorize these units. Remember just a few moments ago, I was making a big deal about how important it is to indicate the signs on numbers, um, either positive or negative. Now, there's some numbers that you don't need to indicate the sign on because they're always positive, um, like time. Um, so, for example, suppose that five seconds have elapsed. Well, even I am not going to tell you that you have to say it's positive five seconds because we hardly ever talk about negative times. So this is always going to be positive, so we're not going to bother putting a positive. So suppose that something takes five seconds. How would you write that down? If something took five seconds, you write it like this. The time equals five seconds. There's no need to say positive five seconds. That's going a little too far. After all, we would almost never talk about negative five seconds. Uh, that would be a little bit weird. So if there's something that's always positive, we're not going to put the sign in front of that. So this would be a good way to write time. However, all the other four variables can be either positive or negative. These other four variables can all be either positive or negative, which means, I insist, every single time you write down a value for one of these variables, you must include the sign. Not just if it's negative, but also if it's positive. So suppose that I tell you that something um, ha uh, moved five meters in the positive direction. How would you write that we moved five meters in the positive direction? This would tell us our displacement is five meters in the positive direction. Now, so far, this is bad. This is not a good way to write that. Since we're moving in the positive direction, we should have said that the displacement was positive five meters. Now, of course, if you leave out the sign, anyone would assume that it's positive. But remember that we're going to try to get into the habit of always including the sign in front of both positive and negative numbers. So if I tell you that it's placing this five meters in the positive direction, this is a bad way to write this. I insist that you write it this way. We don't need to bother with that for time, because time can never be negative anyway. So we don't need to worry about the sign. We don't need the sign for time. But for all the other variables, displacement, velocity, the other velocity, and acceleration, anytime we have a number for one of those, we're always going to write down the sign, either if it's negative or if it's positive. OK, so the lesson again is that these first four variables, displacement, initial velocity, final velocity, and acceleration, are all signed numbers. We're never going to write down a number for one of those without either a positive sign or a negative sign in front of it. On the other hand, time is not really a signed number. Uh, because it would be so weird to ever think about a negative time, we're just going to always assume that the times are positive. Um, there are some kind of advanced or interesting applications where you could have a negative time, but we're not going to get into that. We're just trying to um, go over the basic types of problems that you would have if you're just learning this material. 
So for all our purposes, we're always going to think about positive times. Since the time is always going to be positive, it would be uh, useless to always put a positive sign in front. So we don't need a sign here. But the other four variables, we're always going to include a sign. Uh, this might seem trivial, but uh, trust me, uh, getting into this habit will save you lots of grief later on. It will save you from making lots and lots of the common types of careless mistakes that people make when they don't include the signs.